Amen. If you had your Bibles, we'll be in Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3, we'll get there and stay in honor of God's Word. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Start reading in verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter... Fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And now listen to this part. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Amen. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. Amen. Wow. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. We come to you in Jesus' name. Thank you for another day. Thank you for your word, God. God, we ask your hand to be upon each and every one of us tonight, God. God, I pray, God, you would go to every pew tonight. And Lord, you just touch hearts, God. You just take care of the need. Lord, you do what the Holy Ghost can do. Because we can't, none of us do that, God. God, we can stand and bring a message. We can stand and quote scripture, but the Holy Spirit has to do the talking. Lord, have your hand on us right now, God. And Lord, touch each one in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I want to preach a little while tonight on this thought, what I would like to give this Christmas. What I would like to give this Christmas. I thought about it as I was uh, thinking about this and studying. How many of us have ever given a gift down throughout the years? And if you've, if you've ever had a small boy... Amen. You're going to know what I'm talking about. You give a gift and you spend a little bit of money on it. I mean, before the wrapping paper got thrown away or burnt, it was broke. It was gone. It was destroyed. Amen. Them little girls do that to them. I'm going to say it seemed like them little boys was a little, little harder. And then you have gifts that, you have, that we give out that, that somebody can actually use. Have you ever given a gift to someone and they really needed it? And you saw the look on their face. And you saw, you saw what, it, what, it, what it did. You know, I thought about it as I've, and I've been reading and studying some and going back and reading over the Christmas story and the provisions of the gift that the Magi gave to Jesus and Joseph and Mary on that day, that the provisions of the gift, they gave a gift that actually did something. Because we know the story that uh, uh, God told Joseph to go uh, to Egypt and he, had, he took that gold, frankincense, and myrrh to help live on. And there's nothing wrong with giving little gifts and, and, and stocking stuffers and, and things like that. And all that's part of the, part of the uh, good time that we have during Christmas season. But you know, what I want to give this Christmas. Yeah. And I want to look at this passage of Scripture here in Acts chapter 3. You know, I've, I've thought about all kinds of things as far as the perfect Christmas gift. And we, some, some give clothes, some give jewelry, some give uh, uh, all kinds of things, you know. What would be the perfect gift that you could give this, this year? I want you to just look at some things here. Number one, what I don't have. Peter said, silver and gold have I none. So we, we can't give what we don't have. As I was thinking about this and praying about this, you know, listen, we can't give back loved ones. 
Amen. I mean, I mean, if and, and think about it is, if your loved one was saved, they don't want to come back no how. But if we can't, we can't give back love on some. Once somebody's gone, they're gone. There's nothing we can do about that. We can't give back loved ones. We can't give back husbands, wives, or children. We can't give back uh, 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 things after families are broken up, and we can't we can't give those things back. And most of us in here, we just common folks, you know. But it ain't about money, so you know. I mean, Wes, I mean, I, I, I know you, you, you like I am. I, I spoil my children, and I, I, I'll do my best to try to spoil the grandchildren if, if I can, Brother Robert. You will too. But listen, I don't, I don't have millions of dollars just to bestow on gifts for just frivolous things. That's right. So it ain't about what I don't have. That ain't got nothing to do with what you're gonna do this this year. We can't give back our health when, when our health is gone. It's gone. We can't give back virtue to young people. Once a young lady has lost her virtue, it's gone. Once a young man goes so far, it's gone. I mean, you can't give that back. I wish we could, but I'm just telling you, uh, if you don't have if you don't have sunshine to give, you ain't gonna give nobody sunshine. Amen. And some of, some of us could really stand to use a little sunshine, amen. I mean, we, we, can, we can do a whole lot better than we do. Come on, yeah. But the thing about it is, you know, if you walk around with a sour look on your face all the time, you ain't giving nobody nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And if you walk around with a sour look on your face every time, all the time, then everybody around you is going to start acting like that. Right. And there ain't nobody going to want to be around you. I mean, I want to, I, you know, I, 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 I think it, if you can't spread faith, you can't spread faith unless you got faith. Amen. You can't spread sunshine unless you got sunshine. So it ain't about what you don't have. So Peter said, silver and gold have I none. But now listen, what do I have? But such as I have, yeah. Amen. give I unto thee. Hey. Yeah. I, I heard a joke one time, and I, I'm not big on telling jokes, y'all know that, but, but this thing just popped into my mind, and it'll go real good right here. There's a joke about two old country men was walking down the road, and they'd been best friends all their life. And one said to the other, said, hey man, said, if you had a million dollars, would you give me half of it? Phil said, man, you're my best friend in the world. He said, you know I keep you hand, brother. He said, I thought so. I thought so. He said, hey, man. He said, if you had two hogs, would you give me one of them? Man, if I had two hogs, you know I'd give you one of them. You know that. How about if you had two cars? Man, you know if I had two cars, I'd give you one. He said, what about if you had two cows? He said, now, you know I got two cows. <laughs> That's how most of us are. That's how most of us are. It ain't about what you don't have. It's about what you do have to give. And, and Peter says, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I none. So what was Peter giving him? Peter was offering him Jesus. This man was expecting silver and gold. This man was sitting there. He had never walked a day in his life. All he, all he knew, Jackie, was that somebody would come along and give him a little piece of money. He could probably help pay the bills. He could help his son. He could have a little bit of worth about him. But that, that, but that, and that's what he wanted in his mind. That's what he wanted. But that's, what, that's not what he was going to get that day. Yeah. Peter said, I ain't got no money. But what I got, you can have, glory to God. When's the last time you got up in the morning and left home like that and said, I don't have a whole lot of money to give to the world, but what I got, I'm going to give somebody today. I'm going to let somebody know about Jesus. I'm going to let somebody know how to go to heaven. I'm going to let somebody know I, why I'm as happy as I am all the time. He was going to give you Jesus. Now, when you offer somebody Jesus, what he offered, he was offering salvation. That's the best gift in the world. If he would have walked across there, coming up through there, Brother Scooby, and, and this man laying there, he never walked. And Peter said, listen, I don't have a whole lot, but what I got you can have, let me tell you about Jesus. And if the man would have got saved by the dawn moon, it would have been worth it all right there. He would have got the greatest gift that he ever got in his life. 
if he'd have got salvation. But Peter was offering Jesus. And I'm telling you, when you give somebody Jesus, they give a little bit more than salvation. Amen. Somebody ought to shout right there. Somebody ought to raise your hand right there and say, thank you, Lord. I'm glad I ain't going to hell. But aren't you glad you got a God that answers his prayer? Amen. He was offering him Jesus. He was offering him a better life. How many of us can testify? It's been a better life since Jesus showed up. Amen. 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 I don't know, man. Let me tell you something. Somebody said this the other day. If heaven wasn't real and none of that was real, and I know it is, but if there wasn't a heaven and there wasn't a hell, I'd still want to be a Christian because this is the best life I've ever had. Thank God I, I, I love what I'm doing. Amen. I love being saved. Amen. So he was offering him a better life right now. He was offering him a better life now. In that situation, sitting at the beautiful gate, he was getting ready to give him something that was going to help him on the spot. Amen. He was offering him Jesus. He was offering him hope. Listen, we know, we, 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 read, we read the story, preacher. Don't we read the end of the story? We know what happens. This man sitting there, Alan, looking up at Peter and John, and he's expecting money, and Peter said, I'm getting ready to give you something that's going to blow your mind. Amen. He didn't know he was getting ready to get up and start walking and running and praising right. God. He didn't, understand. he didn't know what was getting ready to happen, but I believe Peter had in the back of his mind what was getting ready to happen, yeah. because Peter had enough faith to know that what, when Jesus Christ was going to say, things change. Yeah. So Peter was offering him hope. You and I, we can offer people Jesus. You and I, we can offer people hope this year. Right. When's the last time you offered somebody hope? Yeah. When's the last time you offered somebody Jesus? Hey. Listen, listen, Scoopy ain't got a whole lot of money. I realize that. But I, and I've known Scoopy a long time. But I'll tell you, Scoopy one of the happiest people I know. I'm telling you, he offers people Jesus. He talks to he'll talk to a signpost. <laughs> Don't laugh, you ought to be too. When's the last time you offered somebody Jesus? Listen. All them people standing at the door of Walmart ringing the bell, all of them ain't saved. Right. Right. They expect somebody you want you to give them something. Amen. Amen. It don't take a whole lot to tell somebody about Jesus. It don't take a whole lot. But that's what you can do this year. We ought to make it up in our mind. We ought to make up our mind. I'm taking between now and Christmas. I'm going to try to lead at least one person to the Lord every week. I'm going to offer somebody Jesus. They might not take it, but I'm going to offer it to them. He was offering Jesus. He was offering hope. He was offering him a future. Aren't you glad you got a future? Amen. Glory to God. I'm, I'm glad I got a future right now. I'm glad I got a future while I'm on this side, Brother Robert. Let me tell you, I'm glad I got a future. I'm glad that next week and the next year, I still, I still got Jesus. Glory to God. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And not only that, when it comes time that I pass over to the other side, glory to God, I got a future over there. Not only is he walking with me here, he's waiting on me there. Yeah. He's offering this man a gift of such as I have. Give I unto thee. Now let me ask you a question. Which did this man need more? Money or walking? That's a dumb question, isn't it? Well, let me ask you this. Which one did he enjoy more? <laughs> uh -huh. Verse 8. And he leaping up stood. Now, I want you to know something. When you, when you read the Bible, we and Sandy's talking about this before. When you read the Bible, you've got to understand. And y'all remember Preacher Paul Lambert quoting the Bible one time, one time and, he, and he quoted the semicolon. And he said, right there, and then, I thought, wow. But you've got to watch where these commas are at. I didn't pay a whole lot of attention in English. Matter of fact, I hated English. Amen. But I know how to read. Now let us read it and, and pay attention to it now. And he leaping up stood. There's a comma. That's right. And walk. Come. Y'all got to get a picture of this. Well, Donald Peter reaches down and grabs my right hand, and I believe he tugged on him just a little bit. And when he tugged on him just a little bit, I believe the, the strength went back to those legs. I believe God showed up, and the Bible says he's leaping up. Yeah. Amen. Stood. Now, it, took him, it took him a little while to get steady on those legs. He ain't never walked on them. He ain't never used them before. So it took him a little while to get steady on his leg. There's a trouble there. So there's a pause right there. And then the Bible says he started walking. Can you imagine, but on the first 
step that he took. This is the best gift a man ever got in his life. This is the best thing anybody could have ever given. And he takes another step. And the Bible says he leaping up, stood, and walked. Glory to God. He's using the gift that was given him. It wasn't like one of them tires somebody gave you and you throw it in the trash can. It wasn't like one of them ugly sweaters somebody gave you and you don't ever wear it. This was something that the man was using. Have you ever got a gift like that? He leaping up, stood, and walked, and went to church. That's what it says. And entered with them into the temple, walking, comma, leaping. I'll tell you right now, I watched a movie the other night. This little girl comes out there, you get her daddy, and she said, Daddy, let's go back in. And when he turned around, she was going, <laughs> What would you have done if you had never walked before? <coughs> Man, I'm telling you right now, I'd have jumped over them, them jokers. I'm talking about the priest would have had a time with me. I'd have been jumping on him. I'd have been jumping pews. I'm just telling you, read what the Bible says. And then it went in the temple walking and leaping and praising God. Yeah. So which did this man enjoy more? Let me tell you all something. He had got money before. And he'd never done that. <laughs> How many of y'all remember the best Christmas presents you ever got? Bear, I can remember the best Christmas present I ever got. That stands out in my mind. And I see you shaking your head, you know exactly what I'm talking about. A 410 shot in 12 years old. Wes, I will never forget it. But a 14 shot that ain't never done to me what Jesus did. Amen. And all the money this man had received all through the years, Brother Donald, never did to him what this gift did to him. Now people will get more from us. Now listen, people will get more from us if we really give what we have. So Johnny, I know you've worked hard all your life, and I know you've been smart, and I, 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 I know you that way, but you just don't have money just to be throwing around, but you got Jesus, yeah. you got a testimony, hey. you can tell people, Jackie, I know you, you, you're a good man, you, you, you you don't have a whole lot of extra money just to be throwing away. But you got Jesus. Amen. So people will get a whole lot more if we really give them what we have to give. Not just trinkets. See, the problem is some people, they try to buy people. Try to buy them instead of, instead of giving them the time and the love that you need to be giving them. You're trying to give them money and presents and toys and all that kind of nonsense. All that kind of nonsense is going to be gone when Jesus and your time and your fellowship will still be there. Amen. Amen. And the thing about it is, you ain't got to go in debt to tell somebody about Jesus. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Yes. Somebody's going to shout right there. <laughs> well, most of us going to mortgage the house just to buy Christmas this year. Amen. Which is crazy. Amen. Amen. Oh, don't let me get on this now. <laughs> oh, we'll take God's money and buy Christmas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on, Rich. Go on, Rich. Oh, Lord, some of y'all look at me strange. Oh, <laughs> I'm just saying, it don't cost a dime to offer somebody to Jesus. It don't cost a dime, Mike, to offer somebody hope. It don't cost a dime to offer somebody love and joy and happiness and peace. It don't cost nothing, Brother Jerry. And we got it. We got it. And don't give it away. Now, don't you know something? This, mm, this gift led to a church service. This man goes into church walking and leaping and praising God, and it breaks loose. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 3, look at verse 12 and 13. 
And when Peter saw it, answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look, look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we make this man to walk? Uh -uh, that wasn't, he, Peter said it wasn't about us. The God of Abraham and Isaac and of Jacob, the yeah. God of our fathers, has yeah. glorified yeah. his son Jesus, who he yeah. delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let it go. But she denied the Holy One and the just. And Peter just broke loose preaching. Yeah. When's the last time a prayer that you gave went to a church service? When's the last time something that you gave somebody actually done some good? I mean, this thing turned into a revival, glory to God. I mean, Peter, Peter, Peter's the one that gave the gift, amen? Peter's the one that gave this man the gift. This man goes weeping and praising and, 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 and worshiping, and, and everybody in the temple goes looking and says, well, that's the one that was just laying out there. Why is he acting like that? Duh, if you have been laying out there for all these years, and now you walking and weeping, you'd be praising God too. And they all obey. So Peter just breaks. I said, hey, I think I'll just preach. Amen. Peter goes to preach. <laughs> Acts chapter 4. And as they spake unto the people, the priest and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in the hole the next day for about even time. So they get locked up for preaching. Yeah. But, but that don't stop the revival. Read the next verse. How be it many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about 5,000. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And you got him right there with you, and all you got to do is offer. Amen. Amen. All you got to do is put it out. Yeah. The gift I want to give at Christmas. Listen, I'm going to give a present to my family. We all are. Amen. It'd be a whole lot better for my family if I give them Jesus. It'd be a whole lot better for people that I meet if I give them Jesus. And the thing about it is you run into people all the time. All the time. <coughs> I mean, pump and gas, you can tell somebody about Jesus. You go to Walmart, you go to Walmart anymore, you're going to stand in line 15 minutes, you've got plenty of time to tell somebody about Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Just bypass that self-checkout. Go stand in that line behind that person with the beer and the buggy and tell them about Jesus. Kevin, yeah, we, we, got, we got something to offer people. Somebody gave it to you. Somebody offered it to you. Why in the world you want to hold on to the best thing that you've got? So what kind of gifts are you going to give this year? <laughs> Listen. Every day, we're going to make up our minds. I'm going to tell somebody about Jesus. They might scowl at me, they might frown at me, they might get down, uh, they might just, they might cuss me out, but that's fine. I'm going to tell them about Jesus. Amen. Because so Jesus has been too good to me yeah. for me to keep my mouth shut. Amen. 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 Oh, Robert, yes. <coughs> Let me ask you a question. How many ever give a gift like Peter and John gave they never had these kind of results. You can. You can start tonight. Amen. You can give the same gift that Peter gave. Preacher, I just don't. See, that's, that's the problem. I think you start to question. When Peter reached down and grabbed that man by the hand, he had no doubt that God was going to do something. And if God didn't do nothing else, Brother Scooby, but save that man, it would have been worth it. Amen. I don't know if I had the faith to pray for somebody to be healed and pray for salvation. Amen. You know how to lead them to the Lord. Offer them Jesus. Amen. I'm telling you, if you can give them Jesus, Jesus can give them the rest. Right. Amen. Lord, we love you. We come to you.